Welcome to this webinar with uh, my good old friend, Chris Grant. Welcome back, sir. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate you guys having me again. Uh, yeah, so it's been a little while that we've had um, had you join us for a webinar, so I thought that it'd be uh, valuable to bring you back and do kind of like a refresher. So do you want to just quickly maybe do like an intro, intro of yourself and uh, give, give everybody an idea of what they can expect uh, on today's webinar? Yeah, so my name's Chris or Christopher Grant, whatever you want to call me. Um, and I like to call myself the tactical arbitrage evangelist. Um, I make YouTube videos and training videos and courses about tactical arbitrage and online arbitrage. Um, I help in the support, um, not as much as I should, but I do uh, try to answer tickets in there. Uh, I'm in the Facebook group and I try to be as active as possible. Um, and then of course I've, I've built software around tactical arbitrage and, uh, and done all kinds of things. So, um, I like to think that, uh, I have really got my finger on the pulse of how tactical arbitrage works and how best to use it. Um, and of course how Amazon works and, and how to, uh, leverage online arbitrage, um, in some fairly powerful ways. So that is, that's really, that's really what I do around the Amazon community. Uh, and you're going to, you're going to show us today, uh, what some of those powerful tactics are, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so <clears throat> because I'm not Canadian, uh, I am, I will show you guys some things that, that I do and that I've shared with others and the mechanics, are really the same across marketplaces. And I would imagine that, that many of you guys probably also sell in the U S or, uh, or I know, I know some Canadian folks who sell like mainly in the U S marketplace rather than the Canadian marketplace. Um, so a lot of this, a lot of it will cross over of course. Uh, and then of course I want to make sure to answer every question that you might have. Um, as a matter of fact, I kind of like to get started with Q&A uh, because it gives me a handle kind of on where the um, where everybody is and then what kind of things we can and should cover over the next hour or so. Cool. Uh, I'll monitor. I'll monitor. Anybody have any questions right now? Right off the bat. No questions. Good. Nothing. All right. <laughs> I guess okay. everybody's a, a little experienced here and they just want to get to the, the juicy parts. Okay. Um, so since that leaves me kind of in a place where I don't really know where everyone is at, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Q4 and I'm going to share some uh, tools and things that uh, will be helpful over Q4. Um, and uh, I don't know. I, I'm, well, I don't know. It doesn't really work up there. I say, maybe I have something to give away, but I could, um, I could even, I could even do a giveaway at the end, uh, for everybody who wants to stay on. Uh, let's see here. Uh, well, yeah, we're gonna be, you're going to be giving away one, uh, membership to your tactical Academy. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll be given, given away one membership to tactical Academy. Um, Yazid actually asked, is it possible to go over Tactical Academy at the end? Um, if you have some more specific questions about it, absolutely. I'll be happy to, to answer anything about Tactical Academy you might, you might wonder. Um, and Simone, uh, minimal websites to search in TA uh, for Canada. Any suggestions? Um, yeah, and I'll tell you what, okay, if I share my screen and, and start chatting away a little bit. Oh, for sure. Take it away. Okay, cool. I am going to share this and I want to make sure. So, um, I keep my screen, I have a widescreen monitor and some folks tell me that they can't really see my screen when I have it up like this. So, uh, if you guys could let me know if you can see that, if you can make out everything, um, if it all is uh, viewable and things like that, that way I can uh, change the size of it if necessary. All right, you see, okay, very good. So I'm gonna knock this down just a touch so that I can keep the Q4 
Q&A and the questions up here because I like to see those. Okay, perfect. That's better. All right. So here is the thing about uh, Canada, okay? Uh, it is a smaller marketplace, both in terms of sales velocity and number of customers for Amazon and, of course, uh, you guys as sellers, but that also means that it is, it's also a smaller number of sellers, of course, uh, but that also means that it is a, um, it's a smaller market for tactical arbitrage as well. So the number of sites is going to be fewer, and that's just, uh, that's just the way it is. Now, there are some things that you can do to combat that. You'll see that I switched this over to Canada so we can talk about some Canadian sites. I don't do a lot of sourcing from Canadian sites. I only really do it when there's a bug and I need to try to help fix something. So you'll have to excuse me because I don't, I don't pay attention to the, um, you know, to the, the dollar exchange or anything like that. So uh, there are a couple of things that you can do. One, always make sure that you have the UPC sites and products only toggled off, okay? Uh, this is one of the biggest mistakes that I see, uh, and it limits the number of websites that you'll see in this dropdown, okay? Uh, now, there are definitely not as many as in the US, uh, but there are some. Uh, and one of the things that I would suggest that you guys do is go to a, well, first of all, if you happen to know sites in Canada, uh, have them made, okay? Uh, if you go to Tactical Bucket and we go to the product search XPaths and look at Canada, let me go to Canada, we can see that there are some there. There's not very many. But there are some, and they've been up to, a lot of them have been updated pretty recently, uh, and, and they've had fixes done, okay? If you don't want to pay the monthly membership for Tactical Bucket, then I would suggest you go to a place uh, like Alternative, I think it's Alternative.2, let me see here, maybe not. Uh, alternative2.net. So uh, this is mostly about software recommendations. So if I wanted to go in and say I want to, to know what can I use instead of Microsoft Edge, it will tell you that, okay? There's another site called Similar Web that will help you as well. But you can actually also find websites in here. Uh, so if we go, if we look at uh, say Toys R Us, for example, Actually, that one's not going to be in there. Let's look at Home Depot. If we look at Home Depot, we're going to see some other sites in here. Amazon, Costco, Souk.com, Jumia, uh, which is an African site, so it's not really helpful, Walmart, and a few others. Okay. Another site you can use is SimilarWeb. And this one, they want you to pay, so there's not as much information in here. But if we put in, let's try Canadian Tire, we're going to come up with some sites that are similar to Canadian Tire. And you could go through and actually have these. Let's see here. Referrals, search. Got it. We want to look at competitors. So what we can do here is we can look at their competitors. So Rona.ca, that I don't believe is in, oh, it is. All right, so good, that one's in there. I know Costco's is, I think Lowe's is. Pretty sure Best Buy is, unless it's in the hospital. Let's check. It is in there. Home Depot, London Drugs. I don't know if that's in there or not, but if you hit see more similar sites, that's when they get you to try it out, okay? So if you do some research like this, you can also, dang, what is the, what's the best cashback site in, in Canada? Are there any? Uh, Ebates. Uh, oh, that's right, Ebates.ca. Uh, 
<clears throat> okay. So one of the other things you can do is go through here. And if you have a VA that could do this for you is have them go through and see all the stores and pull out the ones that, um, pull out the ones that, you know, are selling like this one 800 four clocks. I'm going to guess that's some weird clock site and one 800 got junk. A bunch of these are going to be no good, but then you're going to find stuff like, a pee in the pod, which I don't believe is in tactical arbitrage. It's not P, but you guys have a pee in the pod up in Canada. Well, that could, you could have an expat built for that. And that really is the best way to increase the number of sites in Canada. Now, if you don't want to pay for um, tactical bucket, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to um, going to want to go to Fiverr, all right? Uh, you can go to Fiverr.com, which is F-I-V-E-R-R.com. You can go to Upwork.com. Uh, you can go to Freelancer.com, or there is also um, trying to think of the name of it. Uh, it's it's a job site for Filipinos to, to hire Filipinos, uh, but Fiverr and Upwork are the are the onlinejobs.ph. There it is. Uh, you can go to any of those sites and you can hire someone to create XPaths uh, one off for you. Okay, uh, they'll cost you anywhere from ten to twenty dollars per site. Uh, you're not going to have the uh, you're not going to have the bulk category lists like you do with uh, the ones that are in tactical arbitrage or even you can see I have like Bumble Tree. Uh, this was created by Tactical Bucket. So these will get put in here if you have a Tactical Bucket account. So you won't have access to those, but you can have them built. And this is how, this is how I got started with expats. Uh, before anybody else or before Tactical Bucket was around, I had about 125 or so expaths added to the U.S. site that nobody else had. And it cost some money, uh, you know, which is just the way it goes. But you could also hook up with another seller and maybe split the cost and, and really grow the number of sites that you guys can go through uh, a lot, okay? So that would be the biggest thing in expanding the number of sites you can reach out. And if you're willing to do that, there, I know there's gonna be a lot of people in Canada who are not doing that, and you guys will have the first reach. Now, if you have custom built expaths made through Tactical Bucket and you cancel your membership, do you lose those? Um, that's a good question. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, they get installed into your account. So, if you canceled your account, I would imagine the X path would stay, but you would lose the easy bulk that goes with it. Uh, that would not stay there. Okay. Um, but X paths are going to be the biggest. What, what are the benefits of using Fiverr Upwork versus tactical bucket? Well, in my opinion, there, there aren't any benefits. And the reason I say that is if you use Fiverr or Upwork, there is not going to be any back-end customer service, okay? So what's gonna happen is you hire, you hire a freelancer on Fiverr, which is gig work, and someone's gonna build it for you, and you're gonna check and make sure it works, and if that's it, you go on your merry way. If it breaks, you're gonna have to pay them to fix it again, uh, and, which just happens. The same will be with Upwork. You're also not going to get any easy bulk categories to go along with it. Um, you'll have to have the categories in there yourself. Typically, I would ask them, hey, I need to know what the category looks like when I put this into tactical arbitrage, and I'd have them give me an example category uh, because they can tell from, from the XPath and things like that. Um, with Tactical Bucket, if something breaks, he'll fix it, and you can request sites. There are a couple ways to do it. One, you can just say, hey, let's can you build this site for everybody? Um, or you could actually pay a little extra and have it built just for you. And then it's guaranteed just for you for a little while. So 
the only benefits of fiber and Upwork are it's going to be less expensive on the front end, uh, but there's going to be no backside customer service or anything like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Now, the other thing, um, since Q4 is here, there are going to be... Um, there are going to be a ton of sales coming. So I've been having this conversation a lot on Tactical Thursdays where everyone's like, well, what, what site do I go to? Just tell me the site and I'll go there and I'll source. And I, I almost actually wrote this on Facebook today. And uh, I was going to write, um, give a man a source and he gets paid for a day. Uh, teach a man to source and he gets paid for a lifetime. Uh, and... The thing is, is I really would suggest that you guys follow sales and build your return on investment, your ROI as much as possible. I know that gift cards are a little bit different in Canada, but if you're in the US, uh, one of the places I will go very often is gift card sites and look and see which ones are uh, have the deepest discounts. So like just, just today, uh, one of the stores that we do retail arbitrage at Ross they actually bumped theirs up to 10% off. So I bought, I bought like a thousand bucks there so we could go do some, some RA. You can do the exact same thing online uh, with discount gift cards. Then I also, of course, we can go to Rakuten uh, and you see what sites are, have the highest cash back or have double cash back. I'm not signed in here. So, right now there are several in Canada that so like Staples they have double cash back right now the body shop so I know the body shops not in tactical arbitrage I don't think for Canada that would be one that you could go after these would be these would be some great places to to go and actually have these uh, these built as well guys um, but follow these places and then the other thing is is I would suggest that there's a couple things you can do. One, you can go to salesgazer.com, which is absolutely free. I do have a bit of an interest in this, if you will. It was partially my idea. Um, uh, and then a friend of mine built all the back end portion of it. You sign up for an account, it's absolutely free. Um, we've never emailed anybody, any kind of affiliate messages or anything like that uh, from any of the emails. But once you sign up here and you go to this little gear icon, you can select all the sites from anywhere. Let me get this to work here. This always runs slow when I record or when I'm screen sharing. Sorry guys. So what you can do here is you can actually select Canada and then you can subscribe to all of these stores okay and then of course if you have another site you want to suggest suggest it and we'll add it uh, but what this does is this is basically a spam box for all of the sales emails that you get from websites so we can see right now philosophy.com in, in the US there's uh, $15 off your $65 purchase uh, loyalty members save $25 off a $75 purchase. Uh, and those are, that's on right now. Okay. So if you follow these kind of things, you can find some really, really great sales that, that are happening. Okay. Ninewest.com is actually saving 25% off. That's pretty good. The other thing is you can also sign up for tactical search engine.com. Oops. Search engine.com. And if you log in here <clears throat> and get logged in, you can actually do a custom search. This or sorry, this is a custom search engine for sites just in tactical arbitrage. Now there's going to be a lot of them that are just for, or it's going to be a lot more in the U S however, if, um, Sorry, let me go to, let's do some search term inspiration. One of the things we can do here is let's pull this one right off the top. 
go to the search engine and we can do this. So this is a kind of a Boolean search, if you will. It's going to give you any percent off, okay, in a search. And if you hit the search button there, we can hit Canada. And now we've got all of these, let's go past the ads. Uh, we've got all of these places here that have a percent off in their, on their site for something. Okay, so Saks off fifth, they've got 75% off. There's going to be a lot less. When you do the U.S., there's a lot more in here. Uh, you can also sort this by date, okay? Uh, does the software only check on sale items? What software do you mean? You mean tactical arbitrage or? I think he's referring to this, the tactical search engine, but uh, it's, it's the, the search query that you entered. Ah, uh, so this is just Google, okay? This is a custom Google search engine. So what it does is it gives you any information uh, based on the kind of search that you put in. So for example, this, this particular search is going to give me results that have to have percent off, and then it can be, it's a, this is a wild card character. Uh, and it just has to match this exactly. Now for tactical arbitrage, no, it does not only check sale items. You can go after items that are regularly priced. Um, that, would be, that would be the best way to build your replens. Uh, but there are gonna be a lot more opportunities and lower hanging fruit if you chase sales, okay? Um, I, there are people that only go after replens, and that's fine too. Uh, you can you can search items that are not on sale, you know, grocery items at Walmart, and so on uh, that you can then sell on Amazon for a profit, uh, and you could do that without a problem. All right. Uh, so tacticalsearchengine.com that is a great thing to have. Salesgazer.com, and then another one. Uh, is this thing called dealspotter.com. Now at dealspotter.com, you can actually uh, subscribe to a bunch of sites. And I'm actually, I'm, I started subscribing to some and now I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, have it go out and I'm going to have a VA do it for me. Uh, but basically they give you coupon codes and show you where sales are coming and things like that. So the body shop has 25% off right now, which we saw also in sales gazer, uh, Kylie cosmetics, Birchbox they got 15% off all these different sites. And if we expand this out, I've got a bunch more <clears throat> here as well. So these are great places to get started. See Adidas has 15% off and et cetera. Uh, but these are good places to get started with, what kind of stores you should source at, okay? Excuse me. All right. So, what else do you guys need to know about tactical arbitrage? Do, do you need to know how to set up scans? I really, sorry, I, I really try to get the temperature of the room so I can make sure that we, we kind of do things in the, in the right order for everybody. Uh, I did post in the comment, uh, I posted uh, the videos that we did previously, and one of them was beginners. So, mm -hmm. like, I didn't, I didn't want you to, you know, spend time doing that when we've already created that content. So I did post that. So if there's any, if this is all, like, just over your head and you don't understand any of this, then go back and watch the, uh, we did a beginners video where it's, like, account setup and, uh, uh, like, choosing your criteria and whatnot. Uh -huh. uh, but this is, this is very valuable information that you're providing here. Yeah. I, I used to, I, I used to do, um, I sign up to all, like I had to create a fake email just to sign up to all of the newsletters. It was like one by one. Oh so, man. Yeah. It's yeah. Help, helpful to have this, uh, what's it called, sir? What was it called again? Salesgazer.com. Yeah, it's, it's nice because now I can unsubscribe from a bunch of emails that clog up my own inbox and uh, 
and then it's just it's just there and you know, I can go to it as I please. Um, now, let's talk about some things that didn't necessarily exist the last time we did this. One of these is the, I don't think that the also check UPC products for image matches existed. No, I don't. Uh, yeah, so this is something that should be turned on at all times. This also check UPC products for image matches. And the reason being is that when tactical arbitrage goes out and finds a product, let's say at, uh, uh, let's see here. Let's just say you're sourcing it. Oh, let's see. Sorry guys, you might hear my dog barking because someone just knocked on my front door. Uh, and that is a that is a little frustrating there. Uh, but let's talk. Let's say DCShoes.com in Canada. So these are all UPCs here, okay? But let's say uh, that a UPC does not match from DCShoes.com uh, to Amazon. Well, if you do not have this, also check UPC products for image matches. Then what will happen is it'll just get skipped over. But Tactical arbitrage can match images to each other, okay? And it's actually pretty good at it. And actually, uh, Alex just released an enhancement this morning, well, his morning, tonight for all of us, uh, to make it even better. And so let's say, for example, toys. Tactical arbitrage, I've actually seen it match up, say, a an RC car uh, in the box at the source site to the exact RC car out of the box um, in on Amazon, okay? Uh, so you always wanna have that on. What it's going to do is going to give you some more matches. Uh, so if, it, if the UPC doesn't match, it'll go out, it'll look for image matches as well, and it's just gonna give you some more opportunity. Mike was wondering, does TA tell you how much it sells per day, per month? There is, an estimated sales per month uh, inside of tactical arbitrage, yes. Now, we have to remember that these are estimates, okay? It is based on a pretty strong algorithm and data that Alex has put together with a couple level 11 math magicians, uh, and it gives you this estimated monthly sales. Now, if there are variations, that estimated monthly sales is going to be across all the variations. So if there are, if there are six different variations here, each one should get a little over a thousand, okay, if they are equal. They're not going to be, one of them is going to outsell a bunch of the other ones. Um, but based on the fact that this stays ranked, you know, under, under 50 or under, 75 or so, this is selling a ton, okay? Uh, it gets a little bit more difficult when the ranks are, it gets, it gets a little bit easier to figure out as the ranks are higher because you see the, the ups and downs of the sales graph much more um, easily, okay? Uh, but this is pretty good. Now, you have to remember that it is an estimate and it's not going to match, say, Jungle Scout or any of these other estimation tools uh, because everybody's data points are different. And the estimated monthly sales is based off of the average 30-day rank inside of tactical arbitrage, okay? So it's definitely powerful, but I would also suggest that you use things like the Keepa graph uh, or the history chart here, as well as things like reviews to make sure that the item is actually selling through. Because every now and again, you'll get some disputes in the data, uh, you'll see something that is, says it's ranked 50, uh, but maybe it's actually ranked 50 in a subcategory. Uh, yeah, uh, so Julie is wondering, she has trouble when she's searching like a specific category uh, or a specific sale page on a website. For example, Toys R Us has 20% off Lego or something like that. Um, so there are, there are occasions, and I know Toys R Us does this a lot in Q4, where they will put up uh, kind of flash sales and they'll have their own weird page for them. 
because those are formatted differently than the rest of their site, sometimes they will not work. Uh, and unfortunately, the only thing you can do is manually source them. So I always hope there's not hundreds of products there. Uh, and I hope that the sales are really short. Excuse me. Um, and like, well, before Toys R Us went out of business in the U.S., what I would do when they had those flash sales is I would just go source them manually. Okay. Oh, so let me ask this. How many people pay for Keepa and have a Keepa um, uh, subscription? Okay. Have you guys added Keepa back to Tactical Arbitrage yet? All right, let's talk about that. So one of the things that uh, had to be taken away because of Amazon is the link to Keepa, okay? So you'll see here that I have a Keepa icon, uh, and many of you may not have this, okay? Uh, so what we want to do is we want to be able to add this back into Tactical Arbitrage. The reason being is it makes it nice and easy to see a large Keepa graph, um, and things like that. I'll, I was very surprised at how many people want to be able to look at it, not on the product detail page, because for me, I always just go to the product detail page and then keep a loads up for me down here. Keep a loads up for me here. Okay. However, a lot of people like to see Keepa like this rather than the way that I typically look at it, okay? And there is a way to add this. So what you have to do is you click this little green plus button, okay? And you need to add a URL. Now, if the URL includes an ASIN, uh, it's going to be, that ASIN field will be dynamic, okay? So what we need to do is you can go to Keepa and you can grab any product on Keepa, and the Keepa URL should look like this. Should be keepa.com forward slash pound exclamation point product, etc. Okay, so if I grab this and I go back to here, I put that in the URL area. And then what TA knows is Tactical Arbitrage knows that, oh, well, this B01, it's going to be replaced on any other Keepa graphs or any other links to Keepa. Okay. I'm going to make my mouse over text Keepa. Uh, I'm going to put my identifier as KP, and I'm, you can upload a logo. Uh, I, have, I have one somewhere. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't require an email or anything. Let me, give me one second, I'll find it for you guys. I'll, I'll give it to Dang and he can share it with everybody, but I've got it all ready to go, perfectly ready to download, and you don't have to do anything to it. You can just upload it to TA. <clears throat> uh, but once you put that in there and hit save, you now have Keepa back into Tactical Arbitrage. You can see KP here, okay? I'm going to go ahead and delete that so I don't forget to get rid of it later on. Okay. Uh, the icon next to Keepa in Tactical Arbitrage. That is a great question. I've been playing around with how to make this, uh, make this even more powerful, okay? So what you can see here is in this particular product, and this is something that a lot of people don't do that probably should be done more often. Let me close some tabs so that we kind of keep everything a little more smooth here. You can see this Google icon. Okay, and if we click on this Google Shopping icon, we are going to pull the UPC code. Okay, this UPC comes from Amazon. Looks like we can get this from 25 stores. We're going to click on this here, and it's going to show us all the places we might be able to find it. We can compare the prices. Okay, however, every now and again, that doesn't show up. Okay, uh, or the UPC is wrong. All right. Uh, so what I did is I created a, another Google link uh, with the ASIN. And if we click on this link here, 
it's actually going to do a Google shopping search for this ASIN, okay? Uh, and when it does that, you're gonna pull up all these items here, and it's gonna give me these other matches, and I can go and look at other places. Uh, this one's not a great one, uh, but that's all it is. I am trying to figure out some other thing. Like, for example, we could do this. We could do Google search here, and we could add this to tactical arbitrage. Let's add this here. Google 2. So we'll do that, G2. All right, so now in G2, we'll actually just do a regular Google search. All right, and it's gonna pull up things like Amazon, of course, first, because it's an ASIN, camel, 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 and then some other items in there. So I'm really trying to figure out some better ways to use that. Uh, and once I get it figured out, I'm gonna share that with you guys. All right. So when it comes to Q4, guys, that, I mean, that really is, a, a lot of people make it more difficult than it really is. Um, you really just have to keep your finger on the pulse of the sales that are happening. And Black Friday is coming up. Um, you can check out places like bfads.net if you guys have Black Friday sales or a lot of them up there. I'm sure, sure that happens. Um, and... And that really is all there is. If you can follow those sales, like for example, all of these products right here um, in this, on this particular page uh, are from one sale, okay, that's going on right now. And then I've got it searching other sites to see if the products are uh, available at a profitable price at other sites as well. So that's, that's really all I can suggest. Um, so... I kind of want to, I really would like to be able to answer questions, make sure you guys kind of take away as much as possible. Everybody's a little, everybody's a lot quieter than my typical Thursday crowd. <laughs> this is good, man. This is really, really helpful. Oh, thank you. Does anybody have any questions at all for Chris while he's here with us? It can be anything, you know, how to get started, something's, something's bothering you, something's not right, whatever you got, I'll be happy to answer and get, get you guys in the right direction. Uh, Add-ons I've created for tactical arbitrage. Uh, so <laughs> there is, there's IP alert, okay. Um, so IP alert is a little extension that um, warns you if a brand is known uh, for filing IP claims, okay? Uh, trying to think of one that would show up in here. Anyway, what you'll see here is there's a little green check mark right here. If a brand is known to file IP claims, then you'll get a little red siren here, okay? And it also shows up on Amazon.com. So for example, I can show you this one real easy. If we go to Amazon, it shows on Amazon.ca and all the, other, uh, all the other Amazon sites as well. But if we look at Bulbhead and we go to, let's find an actual Bulbhead product. This one should do it. Nope, not that one. I need to add that brand though. Oh, so we go to right up here, we see bulb head, okay? What's gonna happen is you're gonna see a little red flashing light down here and then you get a little pop-up that says this brand is known to file IP complaints, okay? Uh, it does this exact same thing inside of Tactical Arbitrage as well. Uh, that one works everywhere. Um, the things that I've built that are more US based uh, our Rev ROI, which give you, tell you where to find discount gift cards and cashback sites. It works on some Canadian sites, but not a ton. Uh, and I've built the BrickSeek add-on, uh, which helps you find products from Walmart, CVS, and um, 
Home Depot and things like that in store. Those ones I've never checked on the Canadian sites. Those may work. Uh, I'm getting ready to make some videos for that, and this is actually going to be free soon. So if it does work for Canada, I'll check, and then I can let Dang know, and, and you guys can have it for free. Um, Thank and you, then, man. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Uh, and then I've got another one in the works. I can't really talk about it. It's going to work for Canada, and it's going to be awesome. Um, so I'll share that one once I, once I get all the kinks worked out, and it's actually working for everybody. But it's going to, it's going to solve a problem that Amazon gave us a few years ago that, that they used to actually do for us. Uh, so that anyway, uh, you have a problem with brands that are gated. Almost any potential product I find, mainly toys, I am gated. So <clears throat> here's what I would suggest. And I don't, I'm probably going to pronounce your name wrong. I hope, hope I say this right. Gollum or Golem, not 100% sure. What I would suggest is you be willing to lose a little bit of money um, with a place like EE Distribution uh, or, you know, a, some other toy distributor and buy some toys to get that invoice, okay? So, for example, if you go to EE Distribution, you can get an invoice for a Hasbro Nerf Star Wars gun, okay? And then you should be able to use that for Hasbro, Nerf, and Star Wars, okay? Um, you might be able to do the same thing Three with... Three birds with one stone. Yeah. You might be able to do the same thing with uh, some of the Disney products. Actually, with that Nerf gun, you might be able to get Disney in there as well, maybe, okay? Um, so... Uh, EE Distribution, just echo, echo, distribution.com. Uh, they are a U.S. place, but, you know, what I would, honestly, what I would suggest is if you don't want to pay for the shipping to Canada, find a friend in the U.S. and have the product shipped there and, and don't ever worry about them because most of the products from them are not profitable uh, anyway. Oh, perfect. Does work for Canadians. Uh, is there a minimum order for EE e e distribution? Typically, yes. I don't know what it is. It's been a really long time since I've used them. Okay, let's see here. Some info on Tactical Academy. Okay. Um, so I am really, really open with what I share on Tactical Thursdays. Um, and... A lot of the stuff on Tactical Thursdays is inside of Tactical Academy. However, there is probably three to four hours worth of content um, of some really high level stuff inside of Keepa and Tactical Arbitrage that I do not share publicly. And that is, that is kind of where the real, um, the real value of Tactical Academy is at. Uh, and then, of course, I do update it when things are um, things are updated. I try to update it first, and we have a group uh, where I can be tagged at any time. You get, you know, more than welcome to private message me um, if you have questions. And I, for those people who might have paid a little bit of money to get into Tactical Academy, I try not to make them wait. I try not to make anybody wait, but I try to put them at the at the front of the line when they want to get a hold of me. Um, but the stuff about Keepa, and actually there's an extension specifically for, I have not shared, I haven't sold it, I haven't shared it publicly, um, but it's specifically for Tactical Academy members that I had built um, to make Keepa even better. This is my what first. Is, uh, what is the, can you maybe explain a little bit about uh, the program? So like uh, what, in, what it entails, so is it a call once a week and uh, uh, the course? Well, Tactical, Tactical Thursdays, which used to be Tactical Tuesdays, is now it's open to everybody, okay? Um, Alex, uh, Alex can't do it. He just doesn't have the time because he's trying to make the software as awesome as possible. Uh, and so I said, you know what? I said, this needs to be done. I said, people are, 
people want this information. So I said, I'll do it and I'll do it on Thursdays in tactical Academy. Uh, I've basically kind of laid out a roadmap of how to use tactical arbitrage from a to Z. And then every time an update happens, I try to go into why that update was made and how you can use that. Okay. So like tomorrow I'll need to make a video on the new image matching algorithm. It's gotten better. And it just, I mean, it just happened. So tomorrow I'll try to show how much better it's working than it was working yesterday with tactical Academy members. Um, there's also a course about how to find uh, hire and manage virtual assistants. Uh, that's its own course inside of Tactical Academy. And then my favorite part, of course, is all of the Keepa stuff. Um, Keepa does a lot more than 95% of Amazon sellers know. Uh, and I really go really deep into Keepa and all the things you can do with it. Uh, and then, of course, I've got we've got discounts. Um, I think I'm going to start some office hours. I haven't, I haven't hundred percent decided yet. Um, I am going to do a webinar soon. Uh, there's some X paths there. There's not many for Canada. I will be completely honest. So that's not really worth it for you guys. Um, but yeah, it's basically, it's a soup to nuts guide to getting the most out of tactical arbitrage. And if there's, if, if it isn't obvious that Chris is just massive value all the time then uh, from this webinar, I mean, Chris is being very humble right now, but you have literally like 500 people, probably more now, who has gone through the Tactical uh, Academy. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've done, we've done almost 700, I think now wow. we've been, yeah, we've been really, really lucky with wow. that. Good for you guys. Um, this is, uh, so Steve, this is your first glimpse at arbitrage. Uh, no, no, no need to pardon your ignorance, man. Um, I'm wondering if you get these websites to ship directly to the Amazon customer, ship it to your house or fulfilled by FBA. So let's dive into that. Cause that's, 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 that's a good question for someone who's newer. Um, shipping directly from a website to an Amazon customer is called drop shipping. If you go on YouTube, you're going to see a lot of information about that. Okay. Uh, it is technically against Amazon terms of service to ship from a place uh, like Walmart, <clears throat> excuse me, to a customer. Okay. Uh, there is drop shipping that can be done properly. Uh, and it's shipping from a supplier and to the customer and it has your name, your business phone number, your business address on all of the information. Okay. Uh, so typically what people do is they do a couple of things. One, they will ship it to their house where they could either FBM or fulfilled by merchant the product. Um, you'll see a lot of this happen in Q4 with really hot selling products. Uh, we'll do it even, um, now, there might be, there's going to be some toy this Q4 that everybody wants to get their hands on. Okay. And that'll be one where a lot of people will fulfill it themselves. Uh, you can ship it to your house where you'll need to prep it, pack it, and then ship it off to Amazon where it will then be fulfilled by FBA or fulfilled by Amazon. Okay. That's what most people I would imagine here do. Okay. Um, the reason you need to have it shipped to you first or shipped to a prep center is you need to make sure that you get the right product. You need to make sure it's not damaged. And then there are some things that Amazon requires. If it's uh, a plush, I just ordered a bunch of plush. Those need to go in poly bags. Same with some Halloween items that I have. They're clothing. So I need to put those in poly bags. They need to have suffocation warnings. They need to have M, M SKUs on them or FN SKU stickers. Um, so there's all these things that need to be taken care of to make sure that it, it's done properly. And it either needs to be done by you or a prep center. And then it can be sent off to Amazon where they'll pick, pack, and ship it to the customer when it sells. And they'll handle the customer service and, and returns and all that good stuff as well. It seems inefficient. I was actually, I was, I can't remember who I was talking about this with, but um, I think it was at my wife's birthday party. Uh, the process seems very, very inefficient. 
but all we're doing is taking advantage of inefficiencies in the market and then moving it to a more efficient marketplace where we don't have to handle it. Uh, Golem, sorry, thank, thanks man, Golem. Uh, Tactical Thursdays are awesome, thank you, Julie, I appreciate that. Uh, Vishnu, you have a Tactical Academy membership. What's the extension you have mentioned related to Keepa? Uh, it's called ASIN Dumper. Um, and if you're in the Tactical Arbitrage Academy group, um, tag me and I will make sure that I get you to the right post about it because there are some videos on how to use it. It's not the easiest thing to use, but it makes it, makes it really, really powerful. Oh, yeah. Rishi says, it's my first Q4 doing arbitrage. Are there any tips or surprises that I can prepare for? Uh, the number one tip that I can suggest is buy more than you think you are going to sell. Um, especially if you're, if you're out bolo hunting, if you will. Uh, for those of you who are new bolos or be on the lookout, they're hot items. Uh, a lot of times they get shared in my private masterminds or Q4 groups or sometimes even in larger groups. Um, for example, recently uh, Monopoly Socialism was shared in a big group, okay? Um, and I don't know what it's done now, but I actually went out and got as many as I could and sold them for 100 bucks a piece, and they were $19 at Target. Um, so buy more than you think you'll sell, especially in Q4. The sales volume, and I know this is this happens in Canada as well as the U.S. is just insane. Uh, I th want to say that last year it was something was something like 397 items per second were sold on the U.S. marketplace in Q4, and it was an insane number. Um, during some of the sale times, like Cyber Monday, it was like a thousand items per second. It was it was just crazy. Okay. Um, so you will sell a lot. The other thing is, is that Q4 does not end as soon as Christmas is over. There are gift cards. There is after holiday shopping. You know, kids didn't get what they wanted for Christmas, so their parents get it for them after Christmas. And prices don't always plummet as soon as Christmas is over. There are a lot of things that can still be hard to find after Christmas, and people just pay for it. Uh, you'll see this a lot with video games, although I think that's kind of going more and more by the wayside as things go more digital. Um, you know, but video games will still sell for an inflated price after Christmas because of gift cards, uh, toys, all kinds of things. Are there any assumptions or projections you can make that might not be clearly visible using TA and Keepa data? Yes, uh, there is one thing that TA and Keepa both have a hard time with, and this is products that have no rank, okay? If you actually go into Keepa, you can find products that have no rank for whatever reason. Maybe Amazon's not reporting it. Maybe it's in some weird subcategory or whatever. There's all kinds of reasons. However, those products will carry reviews. Uh, so if a product does not have a rank, don't always pass over it just because uh, there is no rank or there is no Keepa data. Go in and look for reviews also, okay? If there are recent reviews, it's likely that the product sells, especially if there's more than one recent review. Uh, if you see two or three recent rev two or three reviews every single month over the past two or three months, then it's likely that that product sells 20 to 200 times a month. It's really hard to tell. Uh, it just depends on the category and you can figure about half to 1% of people leave a review for how many people buy it. Can we expect an increase in the number of sellers that are currently on listings? Most likely. There are some people who don't sell any time but Q4. In the U.S., there's a uh, there's a seller named Toyberg, and like they're, from what I understand, they buy all year long, and then sell mostly in Q4 because they've got cash like that, um, or or a huge credit line. I don't know. 
Uh, and that's a, you know, that's a rumor, but I see them a lot more often in Q4 than I do outside of Q4. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hate Toyberg too. They, cause they do, they do OA, they do, I think they do wholesale and I know they do retail arbitrage. Uh, there have been, there have been rumors of them going and buying out stores up and down coasts in the U S Uh, let's see here. Uh, you read the Disney Files IP complaints. Um, I have read that too, but I've never had it happen. And I've sold a lot of Disney stuff. Um, I've sold everything from Star Wars to Disney Plush to Disney costumes. And a lot of it sourced at Disney, you know, shopdisney.com. Um, and, even, and even the parks. Now, I will tell you that there are rumors that they will hunt down people who sell park exclusives and try to get them not to ever come back to the park. Uh, but I've never, I've never heard of an IP complaint from Disney that actually stuck. Uh, I usually use the hummingbird extension to look at the rank. I don't have access to Keepa since I'm not selling at the moment. What am I missing by not having Keepa and using the extension? Um, so Alex tried to make the history graph as good as can be. Now it's a little lighter on the range. It only goes to 180 days. Okay. Uh, and we can see that it's got the Amazon buy box points. It's got the sales rank. It's got the regular buy box. Um, so it's got a ton of stuff in here. Okay. So you can get by without having Keepa. You can get by with just what's in Tactical Arbitrage and what's in the Hummingbird app. Uh, and then if you're you know, selling things like shoes and stuff like that, using um, the variation checker, uh, you should be fine. Okay. Uh, it's not absolutely necessary. I am just a, uh, because, because I've been around for a while, I have gotten really used to looking at my Keepa graph here. Um, and so I pay them because I just pay them money and, and use things here. Uh, what are the risks of buying too much inventory from a store's website? I've heard of people getting blocked by online retailers. Is there a general rule of sourcing in terms of how much you buy per order? Um, there is not a general rule really. So for example, I jet is notorious for, uh, banning people. I buy, I buy two products that I replenish on a regular basis, maximum quantities, which is just 10. I mean, that's all they'll let you buy. And then the minute it ships, I go and buy 10 more. Uh, and so I'm buying 10 units every, three days or so and I have not been banned yet and I'm buying just two products. That's, those are the only two things I buy from them. Um, I have been banned from some smaller sites, uh, some places that sell supplements and things like that. I got a cease and desist letter the other day from a, from a small site uh, via email or they actually went out and found my blog because I was an idiot and used my clear the email address to, uh, to get my receipt, which was just stupid on my part. Um, you know, but they actually sent me a cease and desist via email. Um, but you know, and then I've had Walgreens Walgreens has, they don't allow me to use points online anymore. Um, and they don't let me stack discounts like other people can stack discounts. Like with Walgreens, a lot of times you can use two discount codes and they won't let me use two discount codes, but my buddy can use two discount codes, uh, but they haven't told me not to buy from them. And I used to buy in maximum quantities from Walgreens of 39 uh, on a couple things and they won't let me do that anymore. They will cancel my orders if I order more than like 12. So it, it really just depends. Um, Places like Target, if you're shopping in the U.S., uh, they might ban you after uh, if you order a bunch of their loss leaders over and over again. 
uh, and it'll be the same in Canada, you know, for different sites. Everything's going to be different. Um, but you should also know that there's always ways around those bands. Okay. Um, you can use things like VPNs if it's an IP ban. Uh, you can use things like prepaid Visa and American Express uh, credit cards. Uh, you can use, I've had things, uh, I had an address ban one time, so they would not ship to my address, but they would ship to my address uh, unit 101, which was just my address. Uh, I've also had things shipped to my neighbor um, and my prep center actually has two addresses, uh, which is kind of convenient. So there's always ways around a ban. Sometimes you just have to get a little bit um, creative. And then of course, if they're going after you really hard, like this cease and desist letter that I got, um, I asked if I could speak to them on the phone so that I can maybe charm them a little bit. Um, but nobody's, nobody's responding. So sometimes you just have to say oh, well and, and move on. All right, man. I want to be, uh, I want to be mindful. Of I can't see my screen on my, I've had a not responding for like 25 minutes now, just hoping that it doesn't crash, but uh, I want to be mindful of your time. I just want to uh, say thank you for uh, for stopping by and giving us like a ton of value here. Yeah, absolutely, uh, man. I'm happy to do it. Yeah. Did did, uh, did you guys get value out of this? Did you guys learn something from this? Okay, cool. Awesome. How would you like to give away a how would you like to do the giveaway? Let's, let's do that. And then we can, we can call it a night. Uh, sure. I, I, I'm, I'm open to you choosing somebody. If you like, I can choose someone later. It's, uh, I'll leave it. Uh, let me see here. Let me see what I can do. I don't know if I am able to see all the participants or not. Let me... You should be able to. There we go. Actually I can. Okay. So, um, let's do this. Oh, I can't copy them. All right. So what we'll do here is we're going to go to my favorite little tool here, name wheel. And you guys are going to have to bear with me just a moment because I'm going to need to put in everybody's names um, manually here. Okay. Oh. Okay, if that's the case, I can I can choose somebody. <laughs> okay, yeah, go ahead, yeah, Ben. Yeah, I'll I'll choose I'll choose somebody. I'll, I'll announce it in the Facebook group uh, afterwards. Okay. Um, do you want to talk about uh, Tactical Academy? You do have something for us, uh, a discount for us. Oh yeah, if if anybody wants to join Tactical Academy, um, I would love to have you. There is a code. It is F B A T. And that would save you $50 on tactical academy dot, uh, at tacticalacademy.com uh, or tactical-academy.com. I apologize. Uh, and I'm sure that, um, that you have a link that you can share. But if you use code FBAT, it'll drop the price uh, by 50 bucks, save you a little bit of scratch to get in. Uh, and then, of course, I will, if you do join Tactical Academy, uh, I will do my very best to make sure that you become uh, a Tactical Arbitrage rock star um, and help you guys any way I can. Uh, my Tactical Academy, it's a course that myself and Nate McAllister put together. It's really a two-part course, and the second part doesn't get talked about enough. But the first part is kind of an A to Z roadmap of how to utilize every single part of Tactical Arbitrage that uh, is available and also how to use things like Keepa uh, and other softwares and tools out there um, that make online arbitrage easier. And then the second part is once you kind of figure all of that out, the second part is all about finding, um, hiring, and managing virtual assistants to kind of set it on autopilot for you. Um, and that's a whole, that's like a whole eight hour course in there that we never really talk about. Uh, but it's incredibly valuable because, uh, and tactical Academy, you can give to your virtual assistants. 
so that they can learn it without you having to teach them. Um, because once you get, once you really get it, uh, automated, then it's, it's a real, it's a real business. Uh, and it's not just a, a job we've created for ourselves. Um, so that's what tactical Academy is all about. Uh, and hopefully you'll get the, or hopefully somebody gets free copy. I won't just put it on one person. So yeah. I'll, I'll announce, I'll announce it in the group, but, uh, again, Chris, thank you so much again for your time, man. Really, yeah. really appreciate it. And, um, we'll be in touch soon. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody have a uh, fantastic Q4 and, uh, you know, I'm in the, I'm in the Canadian Amazon seller group. So if you guys have any questions or anything that come up afterwards, just tag me and, uh, I will make sure to, to get an answer for you guys. Cool. Thanks a lot, man. Have a All good right. night. Absolutely. Have a great one guys.